Republican candidates who seek to beat Donald Trump are warming up. They're moving around the track, getting their sea legs, so to speak. It's why I wore my blue sweatshirt today in honor of their warming up. Well, Chris Christie appeared on Fox News and he was asked some questions about when it's all said and done, can he and his formerly best friend forever, Donald Trump, make up? Now, in my years as a campaign consultant, I've watched and evaluated thousands and thousands and thousands of interviews. Coach candidates, CEOs, presidents, senators, governors, you name it, through the answers. One of the things I've long said to them, to any person that I've advised, is the key to an interview is to remember this. There are no bad questions, only bad answers. Watch Chris Christie rack up a split score here. If he becomes the nominee, do y'all become friends again? Does he offer you a cabinet post again? Do y'all clean this up if he becomes the nominee? I don't think so. I think you know, some, of the, some of the stuff he's called me um, over the last few months, um, I don't think that's going to happen. And, and I, that's sad. But it is the truth of the matter, and it's his doing. But you're not closing doing. the door to voting for him. I'm, no, I, I'm saying I can't support him. I you can't. can't su- you won't vote for I him. I can't support either one of them. Okay. Not Biden or Trump because they're not competent and qualified to be president for different reasons. Joe Biden predominantly because of his age and... Now, of course, the evaluation of Chris Christie not so long ago was that Donald Trump was the forever leader of a thousand-year movement, I think, right? I mean, he was the guy standing behind him at the critical moment when Donald Trump still could have gone down in the New Hampshire primary aftermath had the field coalesced around him. At any rate, if I remember correctly, it was Chris Christie who evaluated Donald Trump competent to be president, not once, but twice. At any rate, he's come around, and that's a good thing. Because the one thing we should all be able to agree on is that perfect definitely isn't running in the Republican primary. There's terrible to extinction level terrible, some in between, and there's Chris Christie. Now, I get down on Chris Christie sometimes because I was a Chris Christie fan and admirer, and he really let me down by getting behind, literally, Donald Trump. But at any rate, like I said, it's time to let bygones be bygones because The second place presidential candidate in the Republican field is this fascist. Listen to him. Are you in favor of of eliminating any agencies? I know conservatives in the past have talked about closing the Department of Education. Would you do that? So we would do education, we would do commerce, we do energy, and we would do IRS. And so if Congress will work with me on doing that, we'll be able to reduce uh, the the size and scope of government. But what I'm also going to do, Martha, is be prepared. If Congress won't go that far, I'm going to use those agencies to push back against woke ideology and against the leftism that we see creeping into all institutions of American life. Now, the most important thing is to sort and sift through this interview, looking for the gold and all the silt and all the dirt. The first thing to observe is the rampant dishonesty and really stupid dishonesty. Is Ron DeSantis going to abolish the Department of Energy, the Department of Commerce, the Department of Education? He is not. He has no chance of doing that. Yet, we'll pretend like this is high school model Congress with an extremist kid, a dogmatic ideologue declaring fantastical propositions because that's exactly what it is. Fantasy. 
Now, Ron DeSantis isn't the first Republican to say he's going to abolish the IRS. Who doesn't like a good panderer running for president, after all? But he's the first in memory to declare that he intends to use the IRS as a weapon, a blade, to destroy his political opponents who practice what he calls woke ideology, infected as they are by what he terms the woke mind virus. Though no one can explain what that is. Apparently, the woke mind virus has to do with any organization or individual saying anything, doing anything, or taking any position whatsoever that Ron DeSantis disagrees with. Because if that happens, whether you're Joe Schmo the baker, whether you're Erica the carpenter, or the Walt Disney Corporation, he, Ron DeSantis, is going to use all of the power that he can, and even some that he's just making up, to get you, to punish you. It's quite an advance in philosophy and ideology for a party that breached into banana Republican territory in 2016 when the lock her up chants became commonplace. The Republican MAGA movement is America's political party that has sought to criminalize politics, to crush dissent. Whatever the woke mind virus is, Ron DeSantis doesn't like it very much. Apparently, if you say that black Americans were once enslaved and that black Americans were once subjugated, and black Americans were once oppressed in a Southern apartheid society where they could not sit where they chose in a bus or at a lunch counter, then you are infected by the woke mind virus. If you talk about systemic white violence against blacks, if you talk about the lynchings and the killings and the murder in Tulsa, Apparently, you too are infected by the woke mind virus. You see, Ron DeSantis lives in a fantasy world where he will decide what it is that you can think and say and believe, or you face punishment by the state. Now, there's a word for that called fascism. And the Republican MAGA party is fascistic in character. Let's come back to Chris Christie, who in the end is not a bad guy. And he's a talented guy. But like all of us, he's a work in progress and often misguided. So I'm going to help him through this interview with some media advice. It's not about Chris Christie. It's about the United States of America. And the reason that he can't support Donald Trump is because Donald Trump betrayed his country as an existential threat to the survival of American democracy. It's not because Donald Trump said mean things about Chris Christie. It's that Donald Trump ran the American flag to the ground and trampled it, along with the Constitution. Donald Trump sought to overthrow a presidential election with violence. He ran amok for four years. He was the worst president in American history. We should not countenance, the delusion that he was anything other than that. This propaganda that the economy had never been better, 
or that these MAGA years were golden ones, were the unfulfilled Camelot of John Kennedy's presidency, is the most absurd bullshit that I have heard in my lifetime of 52 years. It is extraordinary that anybody would have the nerve to declare such failure victory, to declare such depravity virtue, to declare such lying truthful, and to declare such treachery patriotic. Donald Trump is a singular threat. Chris Christie is the only Republican candidate running, along with Will Hurd, who has said, hell no, I won't do it again. Like I've said, it's tough to move past that spot of, why the fuck did you do it in the first place? But nevertheless, we're all going to have to do that. Because the effort to stop this movement requires making room for new passengers, many of whom will be disembarking from the SS Donald Trump. Now, each disembarkation is a happy occasion. Each defection, each person who says enough, no matter where they are, whether it is sitting in federal prison, thinking about their life's trajectory and how it is they came to be a seditionist, whether it's as a member of Congress, thinking about their cowardice and how they allowed all of this to happen by not stopping it and instead appeasing it, whether it's a voter, whether it's a donor, or yes, Chris Christie. Every person who is an American has a stake in stopping this madness now. It should have been stopped a long time ago. That it wasn't will be judged harshly by our descendants. The people who accommodated it will be also. But that is not our concern. Our concern is grinding it to a forever halt and recreating some sense of balance, normalcy, and decency in American politics, a restoration of principle, of character, of dignity. The American people deserve Americans who can go to the most hallowed chambers in the nation and work it out. Look across the table agreeably when disagreeing with opponents who see the world differently than they do. And let's be clear about a last thing today. A majority of white judges once again has asserted a fantasy and imposed it on the country. The fact of the matter is, is that life can be very, very hard for all of us. No matter what color you are, what gender you are, or sexuality. It's unreasonable to believe that a black kid in the inner city, a Hispanic kid in an impoverished border town, a white kid in rural Appalachia does not have the same advantages for a whole host of reasons that other Americans have. It is in the national interest to send America's teenagers to college, to trade school, to make sure they are prepared to succeed in the 21st century economy 
so they may pursue their happiness and prosperity and one day be in a position to take their place as national leaders. We want more people, not less, in college. We want more access to higher education. And today, once again, the radical United States Supreme Court has slammed a door shut and made it harder for Americans who are disadvantaged to climb the ladder. It's tragic. It's unfortunate. But it is the consequence of a radical ideology that came to be in effect because of electoral victory. It's as simple as that. The next election will decide whether democracy will cease or continue in the United States. And anybody who believes that in a race between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, that Joe Biden wins in a cakewalk is as delusional as Donald Trump saying he won the 2020 election, which I suppose in the end is what Chris Christie is trying to tell us. I think that what Chris Christie might really be trying to say is that he won't support Donald Trump because Donald Trump is the greatest threat to this country since Nazism, since fascism, since global communism, and since the Confederacy. He just can't find the words yet. He doesn't want to sound overwrought. He accused me of being overwrought, ironically, when I said those things about Donald Trump every one of which has turned out to be true. When you think about this next election and the months ahead, understand clearly what it is that you are observing and saying. Indeed, you are correct. There has not been a presidential candidate in the modern era who has promised to use the IRS to get you if he doesn't like what you're saying. So congratulations to Ron DeSantis for that. And also congratulations to Chris Christie, flawed though he may be, for being the only person who can credibly win the Republican nomination alongside Will Hurt of saying what needs to be said that Donald Trump is as unfit as any person in this country for consideration of any responsibility. He should never have it again. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you never miss a video. Also, for more content just like this, please consider joining our Warning Premium community. You can find out more in the description below.